morning, everybody. Thank you, Gary. Uh, as Gary said, my name is John Marcinick, uh, and I am the Director of Integrated Digital Marketing and PR at Blue Fountain Media. And today I'm going to be speaking about the evolution of one of my favorite marketing channels uh, and its growth and its integration with other channels, uh, furthering it along into that omni-channel marketing, uh, and that channel is SEO. And I should probably grab this remote right here because I think this will help me with the slides. But first, a little bit about me. Uh, I've been with BFM. I just celebrated my two-year anniversary, actually. Uh, and uh, despite my boyish glow, I've been in the industry for about 14 years. Uh, I know, I know. Um, <laughs> and I grew up alongside SEO as a channel, which we've seen so many changes and such a transition in that channel that I'm really excited to share some of my war stories with everyone here today. Uh, but first, before we go any further, for anyone who isn't familiar with and anyone who might need a refresher, let's just define SEO. Uh, so SEO stands for Search Engine Optimization. Uh, stolen directly from Wikipedia right here, it's the process of affecting the visibility of a website or a web page in search engine's unpaid results, often referred to as natural, organic, or earned results. So keep that uh, in the back of your heads and we'll reference that a little bit later. And this is what it looks like on search engine results page. It tends to be the two-thirds to three-quarters of the middle of the page, uh, everything uh, below or to the left of paid advertising, depending on you know, whatever mood Google is in, in in that given day. So to understand where we're going uh, and where we've been, I think it's important to understand where we started. And when we started, we really had a single focus or a one-track mind an affliction in a lot of ways, uh, and that affliction was our keyword obsession. Uh, we tracked and researched hundreds and hundreds of thousands of keywords, spent countless hours doing so, and spent even longer applying those keywords to web pages, not just on the page itself, wherever we could find space and wherever we couldn't find space, uh, but in technical elements like metadata, so title tags, meta descriptions, and a field that no longer exists or does exist but we shouldn't be using called meta keywords. Uh, that was really what we did. We loved it, we were obsessed with it, uh, and it was a party and anyone with a brain was invited. Uh, we did this for as long as we possibly could, and you know, I don't want to. I don't want to downplay the importance of keywords today. They're still important, but not like they were back in the day. Uh, we did this until it no longer worked, and it no longer worked because everybody was doing it. So as competition grew, search engines, mainly Google, uh, sent a signal to us telling us that there was a new there was a new game in town right or that's the way that we thought about it there was a new way to recognize the importance of of your search engine pages of your pages in the results and it had a lot to do with a reciprocal agreement between you and other websites those sites boosted you up in the search engine rankings because they were authorities they were lending their influence to you and that influence came in the form of links so we traded our keyword obsession for a link building obsession. And wherever we could find or get a link, we would. We would reach out to webmasters and ask them for a link on their website in exchange for a link on ours. Uh, we would reach out to bloggers, asking them, begging with them and pleading with them to write about us on their websites. And occasionally they would and sometime we'd throw them a 20 under the table. Uh, we we would submit to directories that were completely irrelevant for our brands. It didn't matter. We were getting a link and we loved them. Uh, or we would go so far as to create blogs off-site on Blogger or Blogspot or any of those networks just so we could write about ourselves and give ourselves a link back. That's how obsessed we were with links. And it worked until it didn't like pretty much everything in digital marketing. And uh, at around 2011, we started to see some really big brands being penalized for their link building schemes. And I won't name any names. Uh, but at that point, we realized that we needed to make a change and we needed to grow up. So with that, we grew up and traded the trickery for some true marketing prowess uh, and decided that we needed to build something. And what we built was true brand equity for our clients and for our brands. And it was tough, it was a lot of hard work. 
And it all starts with content. I know that's really kind of been the theme in a lot of the presentations here today. The content is king mantra that I think drives everybody a little bit insane. Uh, but it's true. I mean, it all starts with content. Instead of researching the keywords that we were researching, we were already working with copywriters and they were already doing a fantastic job of inserting the keywords that we told them to insert. Why not give them the opportunity to research their audience types along with other marketers and understand the content needs of the consumers and their search intent. And that's what we did. We started writing for consumers and not for robots. And then developed richer media like infographics and slide shares and uh, image galleries and downloadable PDFs and things that were actually useful to individuals on the web. And it worked because users were demanding a more meaningful content experience and web experience. And that's how we were able to at least begin giving it to them. Great content lives on across all channels and in the Omni world can be used in email, can be used in social, uh, and can be repositioned and repurposed across all of these channels. And a little stat here uh, that I think I stole from one of Joe's decks uh, previously is that marketers continue to increase their, their spend in uh, content marketing. And in 2016, they plan to spend 75% more than they did in 2015. So content is still working for us. We dropped the word link building. It became a dirty word. I hate hearing it. And we still, we understood how to build those relationships originally. So what we did was we hired people with real public relations backgrounds and understandings of how to build those relationships. And that's how we gained our links. So we built those relationships, we nurtured them, we shared information with our contacts, and we pitched our great content out as resources to help build up our brand. Uh, we gained fewer inbound links overall, but that was okay because the links that we were getting were of quality uh, and, and were influential and made sense to the brands that we were pitching. And the trickery of all of the games that we were playing back in the day, it just wasn't working, so we gave it up. So fewer links, more quality, less quantity. Uh, it's, a, it's a better way to work and build your brand organically. We finally recognized the role of social, or we're probably still recognizing the role of social, to be perfectly honest. Uh, for a long time, we hoped and we prayed that social media, specifically the creation of your social profiles and the sharing of, of content on social would directly relate back to a boost in keyword rankings. And we haven't found that to be the case. If anyone knows any different, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, but in everything that I've read and studied, that has not been the case for, for us in SEO. But strong social presence is necessary for brand building. And it does help indirectly your keyword rankings and your SEO benefit. So again, it all starts with great content. Great content can be shared on social, leading to things like greater brand awareness and greater awareness around your product. So if something is shared on social and it goes in the back of a user's mind or a customer's mind, they may search for it later, building search market and market share and search intent. So that's a really good thing. It increases your search engine real estate or SERP uh, SERP results real estates, meaning that more listings are about you. So if you have your Facebook and Instagram and, and uh, LinkedIn profiles appearing in the search results uh, and your competitors don't, then people are more likely to click on some of your results. So that's all great in building up the real estate. Uh, it really helps with relationship building with bloggers and media sources. So I know that if a salesperson or somebody in the press reaches out to me over the phone, I'm a lot less likely to even pick up that phone uh, than I could have been maybe five or 10 years ago. Uh, so reaching out to people via Twitter or LinkedIn is actually a, a great way to build relationships and get some of the placements that you'd like. And some of the best brand marketing can happen organically. So if you share something on social and it's a great content piece or a great resource for some of your readers and some of your potential customers, then a piece like that being picked up and going, I hate the word viral, but you know, going viral or being shared organically across the, you know, the web, that's some of the, the best result that you could ever have. I'm not gonna go into too much detail on this because it can get a little bit technical and I don't wanna geek out on you, but local and universal search and the way that the search engines are changing has really 
been the crux of, of how SEO has, has been moving forward. So some, some of the things that we're doing now, uh, like building up your hours, operation hours, your phone number, uh, and other elements in the search en engine results, and I know we've seen a lot of these as we've searched, uh, is really helping to differentiate you as a brand who's doing SEO or who's building out their search engine results right versus someone, then who th versus someone who's just applying the tricks. Uh, and we're seeing things like uh, Google Answers, uh, optimized uh, content appearing in Answers, so maybe you're searching for uh, a popular question that appears right in the search results pages, or you're searching for a recipe and you see a preview of that recipe right in the search result, that is really cool. And if your brand is one of the ones lucky enough to have something like that occur, then that means that you're doing everything right and you're being rewarded for it. And again, that helps to fill out enticing search engine results pages that some of your competitors may not have if they're not playing appropriately in the game. So, where are we now? That's really where we've been for the past few years, and it's shifted and changes, uh, changes a little bit. But just to recap, I think, where, where we've seen search headed recently, uh, it's SEO specifically is no longer a set of simple technical rules. The rules are still very important, and we need to make sure that we implement them in order for your uh, pages to be found, but it doesn't end there. We've swapped our keyword obsession for a theme focus, which is really important for us to be able to get content out to readers and to users and potential customers that they can use versus what websites or search engines can reward. Chasing link quantity is a dangerous game. We don't do it anymore. I'd much rather see a one link from the Huffington Post than 20 links from, you know, mom blogger with a domain authority of 10, right? Uh, that's really a much greater benefit to your brand. Content is necessary for all channels of marketing, and we've seen that. That's been a common theme across all of these presentations today. And really important to note, off-site recognition, generally in the form of links and brand mentions, accounts for more than half of your SEO benefit today. So if you're only doing on-site optimization and you're not paying attention to how other people see you and the signals that they can send, then you're really not truly doing SEO. So have there been any changes to your audience and where they are and how they search? And the answer is yes, because the search engines change and your audience uh, tends to learn and grow up along with the, with the web. Uh, so they are still searching, they're just finding some other things. And I know that everyone who's ever used Google, and I'm sure that's every single person in this room, can relate to this. So Yelp, Google Places, and hundreds of more local citations like City Pages and Yellow Book uh, and even Google Snack Pack, which are the, uh, you know, the three listings that appear in location results, tend to appear for a location-based query. Generally, it's not a link to your homepage, right? Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Glassdoor, and a few others tend to appear for brand-related queries, and that's just the way of the world today. Those are behemoth websites, and they're rewarded for all of the content and all of the, the clout that they have. News sites, blog sites, uh, review sites uh, and, and other media type sites tend to appear for any events and promotions or product reviews that you may have uh, and any brand mentions as well. If you're doing an interview with one of your stakeholders, it's likely to appear on a new site and that site ends up appearing near the top of the search results versus your website, just how it works. YouTube, which happens to be the second largest search engine on the internet today, more queries are performed on YouTube than they are on Bing and Yahoo in any given day combined. That is where 90% of your video is going to appear and that's going to be brought to the top of the search results for video related queries. And the big guys like Wikipedia always appear at the top for any sort of informational search term or, uh, or very broad search term that you might put in. And Google Answers, like I mentioned, starting to bring some of that information directly into the search results is what we're seeing. And this is all happening because Google is a website and they want to provide as many options as possible for their users. And, you know, think about it. If 10 out of 10 links on a search engine results pages are about your brand and direct back to your website, that's not a great user experience. 
for the for the users that Google aims to attract. So they want to they want to provide as many options as possible, and that's what they're doing. So the solution to the new landscape of search, it's pretty simple. We live in a social web world today, so you need to be everywhere. And if there was a time for an echo on the microphone, that be everywhere would be it. That's what we need to take home today. A social web audience trusts their peers, their reviews, and news media more than they trust anything that you could say about yourself on your website. That's just fact. So you need to join existing communities and organically nurture your customers where they are. Don't expect that they're always going to come to you. It's great when they do, but go to where they are. And above all else, take good care of your brand and your brand's reputation. Take care of your consumers and take care of your employees. Because as we all know, negative sentiment spreads a lot faster than the positive on the web. So for a second, let's just look back to the definition of SEO or even just what SEO stands for. It's search engine optimization. It's the optimization of the engines. It's not your website optimization. So keep that in mind. Your website will hopefully appear for one of 10 results on the search engine page aiming to capture the other nine results through social media, positive reviews, and media placements will guarantee that users find your brand somehow. Thank you.